just going to get on the chair. Okay. Well, I wanted you to come greet everybody too. So. All right, I just need to see. I'm not seeing the chat here. Hold on a second. Okay. Okay. You can do it here if you want. All right. No, nope, it's okay. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome everybody Hi. to Finding Yourself with ADHD. I'm Siri Solden. This is. And I'm Reg. Reg. And just for some of you who are new, we do this broadcast, Finding Yourself every other month. Um, it's part of our website, our online community that we run, addjourneys.com. That's really a place for support and understanding, a place where you can get messages from the two of us in various forms, video, audio, written, and contribute and, and interact with each other. That's where most of the the best sharing is going on where you give and you get what you need to each other. Um, so I hope you'll check that out. This for broadcast will be taped and uh, saved there along with any of the uh, links or information that we refer to. Um, and Reg is just going to uh, maybe review real quickly for okay. <laughs> new people here if you want to chat or if you want to send in a question. Some of you have sent them in already. And, but if you want to send another question during the broadcast to Reggie at seriesolden.com mm -hmm. or um, to chat uh, here. We'll right. Mark. So if you didn't get a chance to send me an email, um, you can do that through the broadcast or you can choose to chat. And again, you go ahead and you don't really see anything other than the blank window in a dialog box under the word audience. And if you type something in, you'll get a prompt to sign up for the chat. And again, you just put your name and a password that you can make up, do your email and your birth date. I think they need to make sure that um, yeah, you, can make that, you can make that up too. Yeah. This is, although we are not an over 18 show, we right. don't, <laughs> there's no okay. reason for that. Right. But go ahead and do the security, um, you know, reading the letters and numbers, and then submit it, and then we can chat. So. I will be monitoring that, and um, the, it, Siri and I have not been together on a broadcast for months. We've been in different places, um, and so I don't know. We may be a little, we may be a little goofy today. We're kind of like getting back on the bicycle after no, six months. Really excited, you know. Normally, the site and the show is about finding yourself with ADHD. Questions about your self-image with ADHD, relationships achievement, all those kinds of things. But today I have a special theme that many of you might have seen in an email that we've sent or online now. Um, so I want to center it, at least at the beginning, around this, these wonderful pictures that we found. And we're excited about starting a new ADD Pride campaign, sort of. And it started Hi. with when somebody showed me this picture. And, and on the site, and we'll have some links to it, hopefully, I'm not sure you can see it that great, here, but it's, it's a picture that's been circulating about, this is Einstein's office on the day he died. And when I saw this, my first reaction is, wow, now would Einstein, like my clients, be saying to himself, oh, what a terrible person I am, or what a bad character I am. I'm not going to do any of the work that things, I uh, produce the ideas that are in my mind until I get a handle on cleaning up this desk. I'm going to stay here every day until this desk is clean. No, obviously he didn't do that. So I realized that my clients and all of us with messy desks have this sort of warped yardstick. We're picturing the lady down the block with the perfectly clean house when we think about what's right and what's wrong instead of thinking, oh, you know what, I must be very creative. Maybe I'm not a genius like Einstein, but I'm more in that realm of of being creative, oh, Reggie's distracting me. Um, I have a different yardstick now, and so you have to ask yourself, who are your role models, and can you compare yourself to people like that when you're thinking about, you know, who you are? And then I saw another um, picture today of, and again, we'll link to these. This is of Steve Jobs' office. Um, you know, I like this one even better. Uh, because you think of Steve Jobs as this design freak, freak and everything being perfect and then to see that behind the scenes. Um, so I think it's about what's 
what do we consider normal and what do we compare ourselves to is so important. Now, I was trying to put up, it's ironic, you know, I was trying to put up my pictures on my messy desk because now, you know, I say, hey, I have a messy too, desk too. And to try to be proud of that fact instead of, you know, ashamed of it. So Reg was taking a few pictures of my desk and I was saying, all of a sudden, oh no, you can't put those up. They're not messy enough. So all of a sudden, my whole mental image of what was good to show what had switched. So I want you to think about what role models you have, what are you comparing yourself to. And this all reminded me of a, a movie with Kevin Klein. and I asked Reggie if she knew that movie and I asked her to talk about it because it's about coming together as a community and rising up and saying, well, hey, we all have uh, these different issues and we can support each other. So Reggie, want, and she'll link to the movie because she knew it and she said it happened to be one of her favorite ones. Oh, I thought it was okay. apropos. <laughs> Um, okay, and one other thing that I wanted to ask is if, um, I wanted to tell you, if during the time that we're broadcasting there are advertisements that pop up, you can always hit the X and make those go away. I'm also curious if we are, um, how the feed is today, If are we coming across pretty smoothly or are um, we starting and stopping and starting and stopping and you could even let us know via email or or the chat. So the In and Out movie with Kevin Klein is an oldie but goodie. It has um, Joan Cusack and um, oh, and some other wonderful people. But um, there's this the one scene in the movie. This is a very small town, and um, one of the teachers in the high school, Kevin Klein, happens to be gay, and he find he he's resisting it because this is a very um, it's just a very small town USA and nobody There's one way to be normal, right, one, one way, way to be right. Right. And this is how you do things and, and he's getting ready to get married. So things are progressing just how you do things. The parties and the and the um, planning and um, the mom and dad are all involved and 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 finally um, he gets he the town gets some um, uh, I guess some awareness because a little a kid from their town is an actor and won an award and he um, announced that his theater teacher, his drama teacher, English teacher, who Kevin Klein is, was gay and he wanted to thank him and of course this is news to Kevin Klein in the movie and, um, and th this one scene everybody um, stands up and announces one at a time, one right? at a time yes right. and says I'm gay and well, my name is so-and-so, and I'm gay, and um, they're trying to support and, and break the stigma um, because the town, of course, is in an upheaval over this news. So anyway, so that yeah, was so sort of the scene that reminded me of when I saw this picture. Right. I said, let's do a campaign. So I think we're launching a new campaign called I Have a Messy Desk Too, you know, campaign. So we want you to, I'm going to post my pictures when I get a picture of how messy it really is, and I'm you know, it's pride. It's a messy brain pride kind of. So mm -hmm. if you have a messy desk that you've been ashamed of, uh, I want you to send in your pictures. You can send them to Sari or Reggie at SariSolden.com and we're going to create a campaign where we can get videos or, or pictures and it breaks the stigma. And you can start identifying with, you know, people who are real role models for very creative people. Uh, with, so that's mm -hmm. where we're at about this thing right now. So. Um, please do that, and we can just all, all join together in a community and support each other. Um, so Yes, wonderful. Thanks. You know, um, this is a write-in show or call-in show, but a write-in show about your questions, but um, I also I, I comment on things that I observe all week long with uh, the, the amazing people that I uh, see every week who struggle and also have the strengths of adults with ADD, and to this point, um, I spoke to someone this week who um, has disclosed that you know she has uh, these struggles, learning disabilities and ADD, and she's disclosed this at work, something that was years and years in coming, and what a wonderful triumph, really, a relief to be able to say, this is who I am, I no longer want you to uh, define me and misunderstand me and put all these negative 
ideas of me when I am contributing this wonderful thing to this place where I work and I want you to understand who I am in full. And I thought, well, what a wonderful role model she is. Again, an inspiration. She's the kind of person, if you see them in a movie, you know, that's when everybody starts to cry because it's people who have struggles and keep trying and trying and doing so much and so good with these difficulties. Those are the people, ironically, that in real life we all respect. But for us with ADD, we sort of hide that. And, um, you know, if it's coming to disclosing a physical impairment, well, nobody has a problem with that. But when it comes to disclosing or uh, people uh, understanding that you have an invisible uh, difference, then, you know, it takes such a toll over the years for so many of, of the adults with ADD that I see. So um, having, you know, understanding the kind of uh, inspiration you can be and having your own role models as well as being a role model is so important when you have these uh, issues and another issue that um, I like to talk about in terms of this and a lot of clients I see have this and probably a lot of you out there have this that I've talked about before but it's not a common term yet this two times uh, twice exceptional this means uh, that you're either gifted or very creative or very smart or you have a lot of strengths on one end but you have these great challenges on the other end and this is a really particular difficulty and I'm sure that well, Steve Jobs and Einstein, they all typify that. People who don't have the organizational package to support their amazing ideas. Um, and if you don't have a lot of ideas, you don't have a lot going on, you know, it's not so bad if you can't organize them. But the frustrations there when you have a lot to give and a lot to contribute and you don't have the way to put it all together. And that's when you need uh, to reach out and get support and see yourself as a whole person. Um, I talked last week on the site and there's a blog there still about the difference between healing and curing. And when we can't cure who we are because we can't get over our brains and more importantly we don't want to get over who we are, you know, our choice is to figure out how to heal ourselves. How to heal, to, that means to restore to wholeness, to see ourselves and feel that we're whole, our strengths, our difficulties, our values, our characteristics. We want to heal, move on, heal the wounds that we've had growing up or from earlier times. Or, and we want to, instead of think about get over who we are, we want to heal inside. And it's so important to understand when your wounds are being activated, when you are comparing yourself to a false image of what's normal or what you should be, is to realize when you're feeling upset or bad or some of these bad self-talk comes in or the shame to realize okay what's being activated here from earlier was I you know was this that feeling of invisibility was this a feeling of rejection of earlier pain of not being seen for who I am and you know you hear a lot about mindfulness these days and what I want you to do is just sort of accept that those feelings are there understand where they come from and they don't have to hold you back you can sort of live with them pick them up and go about your business anyway you know sort of acknowledge that these are bad feelings um, and that if you see yourself whole you'll be able to go ahead and um, focus on on a meaningful moving towards something meaningful um, defining defined by who you really are rather than narrowly focusing on these um, challenges so I guess I was really inspired by those pictures of Einstein and, and Steve Jobs today and um, and so um, a lot of the questions that we had were around those issues this week. Um, Reg, you got any other questions before I go on to the ones I've already picked up here? No. No? Okay. Um, well, somebody has um, asked about, to this point of interpreting things negatively all the time, someone asked about, oh, is if you have generalized anxiety disorder, you know, is that just because we're, we're so bent on getting negative stimuli that we're just anxious to create negative stimuli well certainly you know if you have ADD sometimes you will focus on whatever is in front of you and sometimes people use worry as Ned Hollowell says you know to focus but I think more importantly more commonly people have a generalized anxiety as a result of living with this undiagnosed and undefined kind of problem the swirling or as one a woman said to me this week in a great image that only people with ADD to come up with. She said it's sort of like that scene in The Wizard of Oz during the tornado where everything is flying by the house. Um, 
and and that's sort of the brain of adults with ADD and how difficult that is to have things swirling around you and not being able to hold on to it. Um, so I think usually the anxiety comes more from the experience of living untreated and undiagnosed ADD. So you want to be careful that you don't interpret everything negatively in the most negative way. Um, and then um, another question we had was if, uh, from a woman who was saying that um, why is she becoming more disorganized recently in the last few months? Um, nothing really has changed. Her medication really hasn't changed. Um, but when we look at, and even her medication's working pretty well. So when we look at her life right now, though, it was obvious that her life is hurting her brain. You have to look at, is your life hurting your brain? Is what you're doing hurting your brain? You know, And that's um, what I talk about in Journey 3, uh, in Journeys, is to really understand when your brain works well and when it doesn't, when it's not going to work well. Uh, you might be doing a lot of great things even. This woman is doing a lot of great things, but her brain had crossed that threshold where she could, couldn't divide it anymore. So it was sort of like splitting the atom. You know, she's doing this, this, and this. It's not the individual activities. It's in terms of that executive function is, whoa, when there's too many things and each one of you has a different threshold, or you can't organize them and synthesize them and coordinate them, then you know everything's going to get disorganized and everything's going to feel splintered. So you, each one of you has to really investigate and observe where is your threshold? When are you divided in too many different ways? It's not that you might be doing too many things that other people couldn't do, but for you there's a fragile line and each person has this threshold and you have to know, okay, and you don't want to cut out the most the good things, but you want to eliminate the things that are toxic, but even the things that um, are just taking you away from an important focus in your life. Once you have that important main focus, you can uh, you know you can usually deal with some of the other things on the periphery, but you can't have that many main focuses and that many transitions. It's just not going to be good for your brain. Another woman was saying, uh, well, what about, why do I get so overwhelmed uh, by strong people? You know, she has inattentive ADD, she, she has slow processing, she can't come up with the answers right away, so she finds herself, um, you know, on the losing side of arguments all the time. And it's very important, this issue of boundaries and from under, deciding what's good for you from inside when you have ADD, for anybody, but for when you have ADD, again, it's when you're, pulled in too many directions, this person's need, this person's need, this person's argument, you can't possibly follow all those threads. So what you need to learn to do is say, what do I want? What do I need? What are my criteria right now? How am I going to decide this? Not can somebody overwhelm you with a compelling argument about, you know, about don't be ridiculous when you say what you need. You might find people overwhelming or people who are fast processors really trying to convince you of this and this, but if you take that quiet time to say, what do I need, what's important to me, um, you're going to find yourself not running around in so many different directions trying to meet so many people's needs. Anything else? Okay, Reggie yeah. has a question that came in. All right. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and, and read this. Um, you don't have to see me to hear it, so I'll just read it. I was working for a place that I got dismissed from because of my ADD. I got transferred from a classroom I did very well in to another classroom where the teacher constantly complained because I wasn't good at multitasking and doing things quickly. I disclosed that I had ADD and asked for accommodations which were not provided and then she got transferred the following year to a position that she was not suited for at all and um, was ultimately fired from that position about two months later. With both positions this person worked extra hours to make things better. She had a good attitude, was on time, went out of her way to meet their expectations. Um, and the job that she had initially had had just been a better fit before the transfer. And of course that led to things like, um, you know, not wanting to look for a job, but she That's wants to know question. Yeah, what's the bottom line? how to handle. How do you handle the prejudice that comes from the business world without um, letting it wreck you? And um, and, and t you know, and how do how are people with ADD so affected by this? Is it considered traumatic? 
Well, yeah, um, you know, there's a lot of research now about the trauma, actually, of living with ADD. Uh, and I, I can post one an article about that, too. As well as Terry Matlin wrote a good article that's posted on Psych Central that we'll link to about actually this, the stigma of uh, living with adult ADD. Um, that's why it's so important to come to these kind of venues to get support, uh, to gather together with other adults with ADD. Because again, if you're just looking at yourself through that yardstick of somebody who is not seeing you whole. Um, now this woman tried to disclose and you know, I didn't read it carefully because it just came in, but it seems like some legalities in there too, um, to be fired. Uh, Red, you might have something to say about this because it was about a teacher originally. Uh, Red. Well, the... Um, Come talk on screen. Okay. <laughs> um, the, the idea of asking for accommodations and then not getting them is absolutely illegal, <laughs> but you you know again I'm not sure if you disclose to your um, your administrator or to your co-teacher or what that situation was but you do have rights um, and you need to remember that so it's important to make that yeah. a part of what your you know your knowledge base is and your support team should include somebody who can give you some legal advice absolutely good idea um, and I encourage you to write in to the discussion forums if you're a member I don't know if you are but to write in and get some support from, I know a lot of people have gone through this. There was another question Red you had earlier from a woman, it was an interesting question about uh, clothes. clothes. Uh, it reminded me of this blog I wrote like last month, it's on the site too, about the epiphany I had about objects, so I encourage you to look at that, but she sort of had that same situation about the clothes that just go sort of everywhere and anywhere. Uh, what Can you summarize her question? It, it, she had clothes that weren't dirty, but that, that she could wear again, she drapes them over a chair. And because her husband is so organized that bothers him, she doesn't know what okay. to do with these I don't, clothes I don't, that just sort I don't of know pile if they, up. If they can hear you over here, but she okay. was questioned that about a woman whose clothes pile up on the chair in the bedroom and her husband is much more organized and what can she do about it? Uh, this you know, I, I was asking her because she has, uh, they actually say they share, they have a sharing bedroom and one of them has a separate bedroom. Maybe it's snoring. I don't know what it is, but that might be an idea. Sometimes you just have to look at the structural uh, possibilities. Sometimes it's not always about, you know, the emotional and the connection and everything. This, you might take a spare bedroom and turn it into a little bit of your own dressing room, you know, or a spare instead of, I know you, this woman has a big closet in her room, but she's not really using the closet, she's using the chair. Um, I'm very familiar with this phenomenon. So even if she has a spare room like an office or another spare small room that she could turn into her own dressing room where she um, doesn't have to worry so much about, because you want to have your bedroom, you know, full, free of stress. You don't want that to be what's happening in the bedroom. Uh, so if you can turn another room I believe in being realistic. I mean, obviously you need to work at this and you can have help with that and you're gonna get better to some extent, but this is a chronic struggle. So let's try to be realistic and say, maybe if you had a different space where you had your clothes and you had even an armoire, if you had to buy one, that even if there's a room without a closet, you know, like a little dressing area where you could, um, you know, not feel this kind of critical eyes on you. And, you know, maybe he could trade too with you. Maybe there's something that you could provide for him you know that he needs and something that he could help you with you know your clothes um, so you you want to see how far you can go with that uh, and if you can't then you, maybe you could have a separate solution um, there was uh, you know it's always questions about relationships that come up and this young man who was saying that he you know he just feels that so much of what he does how he acts is to be accepted by his family to be loved and um, and how can he, he wants to know how he struggles with that, you know, from the jobs that he picks to the people he picks to dates, he's always trying to get approval from his family and also from women that he dates, he thinks as soon as the ADD, you know, shows its uh, face that they're going to reject him, but there's no substitute for accepting yourself first, the only way to be accepted is to accept yourself first and going back to that theme of wholeness, seeing yourself whole, finding role models that 
maybe aren't like your family but are more like you, people who can inspire you with their struggle even though they have differences, and for you to choose. You choose who, who you want to be with. You choose who's somebody who's accepting and warm, who likes you. You don't have to just wait, am I going to be acceptable? Do I have to hide everything about me? You have a criteria of who am I going to find that is a loving, warm person who can see the real me. And that's sort of my message for all of you out there today. Um, we're going to have links on our site pretty soon to some of the articles that I've mentioned, um, some of the pictures I've mentioned. There's also a couple of good books in the same theme that I just have no connection to but loved when I saw because I have so many parents uh, who have children who are not perfect. Um, I don't know. There are a few of those out there if you listen to some parents. And this one says, shut up about your perfect kid. <laughs> so I'm going to post that name on it. And then some of us have older children that we're still struggling with um, who have their own ADD or other um, the autism spectrum, other kinds of mental illness, other, uh, this is called uh, when our grown children disappoint us. And it's all about how to, I think, let go of, you know, again, those images about perfection and accept reality. You know, reality is not a bad thing. Right? You know, accept who we are, accept who our kids are, struggle, know that it's going to be really tough a lot of the time. And, you know, and just sort of watch that and know that it's going to be there, uh, but it doesn't have to define us or stop us. Um, Reg, anything else you want to say um, as we close for today? Don't forget, this of will course. be taped, and uh, if you want to tell anybody else about it. Okay, absolutely. We'll have, uh, we'll have links up uh, for you to see the, the recording of this show. And, you know, one of the things that... Um, one of the things that that is going to help you share your messy brain, your messy desk, is to let it happen and to face your fear of letting people see it and share it. And whether you do that on Facebook or through our campaign or, you know, start by inviting a couple friends over and saying, you know... Uh-oh, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. But you know what? I think that I think that you know when you're around people who are like you, who think like you and act like you and you you feel that sense of calm and it, and it's okay. Without anything being said, you should be around people who love you, who you just know it's okay. If, you know, my shirt's not tucked in or my hair's not perfect or my I don't know, something's hanging out, it doesn't matter. And and those are the people that you need to be with and spend time with and make sure that they're in your life. Um, and you know what? That could even be your pet. And maybe mm -hmm. you just need to be around your pet for a while and, and have that unconditional love and acceptance. Since I go to the vet and, you know, and, you know, she starts saying, oh, <laughs> she's gotten too fat. <laughs> You're feeding her too much. I'm going right, to start you a know. new, you know, shame-free, you know, I want to start a new shamefreeservices.com, you know, like an Andy's right. List, you know, right. shame-free vets, you know. Oh, <laughs> so you have to be careful, you know, you might, you, or you might be predisposed to feel shame wherever you go when someone's Absolutely. just telling you the dog needs to do on a diet and you're thinking, uh-oh. I did this wrong too. Right, just pets, no <laughs> doctors. Don't spend time with the doctors, just pets. Um, also, join us on, uh, join me on May 9th. The, the ADA uh, has a yeah. great webinar series, and um, you can just go to add.org and, and check that out. It's at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, and we continue this conversation. So remember, we're doing a campaign about I Have a Messy Desk too, and uh, stay tuned to that. But in the meantime, send us your photos, and we'll all enjoy each other's. Uh, realness yes absolutely okay um okay make it a great day bye bye bye